more light. Yes, a little more light. Yes. All right. And <sighs> welcome to the Big Capes and Lunatics episode 150. Of course, the usuals are here. Lilith and uh, Charlie and his new facial hair. <laughs> Looks <good. laughs> Anyway, as we promised, we're threatened. <laughs> we have Master Doom Robert Southgate with us. Hey, hey. And he brought his boyfriend. What did you call him? Master, master Doom. Master Doom. You know, not Doctor Doom. You know, he just has his master. So. Yes. So he's Master Doom. He has the. And I brought e- Peon Doom with me. <laughs> <laughs> what what like, do you do in the privacy? Of your own recording booth, it's not our business. So I should say I brought adjuster doom. I'm not an adjuster. I don't work for an insurance company. So. <laughs> oh boy. Why are you wearing a hat a little? Why not? I just thought you were hiding something. Oh Rob okay. just wanted to roast everyone today. Oh, I'm full of it tonight. I've been in isolation. Chicago's been in lockdown. You know, so, you know the, pro- the problem is Rob wants to roast people on shows that, you know, don't really listen to him. So, you know, because there's five downloads per his episodes. That's why he's joining your show, guys. That's so why he's go. here. He wants somebody to actually listen to him. Very true. You know, they still let you go to 7-Eleven when you're on lockdown. So you can, like, go out. And... I wish I was on lockdown. and say, Unfortunately, I work. well, fortunately, unfortunately, I work in a place that makes ventilators. So, yeah. He's he really? is an essential personnel. Yep. Good for you. Well, to say I, I, it closed down, we're all in big big trouble. Yeah. yeah. Yep. No, he is keeping people alive. I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing figures behind Rob. I'm seeing a lot of figures behind Lil a Lil. So I think a Lil. I think all yours are bigger, right? Yeah, I have <laughs> statues and stuff. I all of the essentials. Amazing, so. Of course, every one of of course every one of Rob's is. Uh, Drinking, Drinking coffee. coffee, yes. Yeah. Would you Would you like to see the coffee collection? All drinking coffee. There you go. There yeah, you go. I, do, I do need the Ron Swanson. That's about you know that Ron Swanson's going for a lot of money now. Is it? Yeah. Not that yeah. one. Don't, out of the don't box. Say animal. Take your figures out of the box. I just I've got can't. Black You're giving too. me like palpitations. Yeah. Why? You know what? Toys are meant to be box that. collector. Yeah. I don't take anything out of the box. Man. I need I need to display my stuff. I, I have everything open. Well, they're all, they're all statues now for the most part. But ever since Toy Story two, when uh, Lilith learned that keeping them in the box turns them evil, Lilith has refused to take them out of the box because <laughs> she wants evil toys. Exactly. You don't need, you don't I need, need my toys. army to go with my armadillos, people. Hello. Yes. <laughs> When she first she masters the armadillos, then she masters the evil toys, then she gets her own series from uh, Full Moon Video. I need it. Oh, what a dream! That's Full Moon Video, huh? Yeah. Rob, Rob's trying to get stuff on, you know, Vivid. Oh. <laughs> I am. It's I'm wearing the bathrobe tonight. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, that's why I said it because I see your bathrobe with your shirt on and probably no pants. Probably. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's funny. Speaking of no pants, and speaking of you know essential employees, CNN actually had an article today that Walmart has seen an uptick in sales in shirts and tops, but they're selling less pants and bottoms. <laughs> oh, oh, for all the video chatting. Yeah, and, and yeah. That introduced the blur background, so you know. <laughs> you, you can, yeah, if you want to, come around. You'll. There's been an uptick in mustache. Show you is wax Amazon. Too. At- Oh, oh, look at that. Yes, I was very disappointed. Uh, the, That's a coronavirus the, party hat. Really nice. Yes, the uh, groom uh, the groom I got is not as good as Clubman's mustache wax, but, you know, what are you going to do? That's the crisis, Charlie. What yeah. are you going to do? So what are we going to talk about, Phil? What uh, are we going to talk about? I don't mustache. know. You surprised me. You were like, oh, I got a surprise. I got a special surprise guest. I, didn't yeah, I, got, I got enough said so we could talk about Marvel. Okay. Special su- on that note, whatever he says, it, everybody. Whatever he says, special surprise guest. Don't get your hopes up. It's you or Chris. Yeah, I know. <laughs> last, time I, last time I had Steve from League of Geeks. <laughs> well, yeah. you know. Surprise, this guy sucks. Well, what's going on with Marvel? I mean, Black Widow's been delayed. Uh, 
What's going on with everybody, Phil? I know, I know. Okay, here's my here's my big question. I've been asking everybody. Do you think, depending how long are they one, are they going to put Black Widow on Disney Plus if they can't release it in theaters, or two, if they delay it long enough, is that going to delay Falcon and Winter Soldier? Does Black Widow have to come before Falcon and Winter Soldier? That's we don't, I don't know. We haven't written this shit stuff yet. I don't <laughs> think Falcon and Winter Soldier is delayed because they can't get they, they haven't finished filming. Well, the, the, the Falcon Winter Soldier is not supposed to be out till the end of August anyway. So. Well, right, but what I'm saying is they've they've already it's already going to be pushed out because they've stopped they, they've had a yeah. shut down filming. So there's right, no it's way a good question. we're going to get this it is, to August. If this is going to last, do they have to get Black Widow out before they debut? Falcon and Winter Soldier. That's what he's really asking because if this thing's going to last, that's going to de- make them decide. Are because I, I don't think they're going to push it to Disney Plus. I don't think they're going to do that with a Marvel movie. They're just not going to. No, they're, they're not going to do it with Wonder Woman. They're sure as heck not going to do it with Black Widow. I mean, the closest you you you're going to see them doing is what they did with um with Onward, where it was where released. you can purchase video. Yeah, on it, it was, yeah, but, and that was already released in the theater. And yeah, even but that's, Onward. An hour is only getting two weeks on video on demand before it goes to Disney Plus. I don't. I don't think they would do that to Black Widow. Black yeah, Widow. They, they know either. Black Widow is a five hundred million dollar movie worldwide easily. Well, but there is the argument to be made that if they released it on demand, yeah, where you can for like two months, demand. yeah, at at twenty thirty dollars a download, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if, no, if, if they bump it up to twenty nine ninety nine, yeah, I think that's exactly. I think that's the price point that mm-hmm. would probably get it get it out. Yeah, so I could twenty, just 20 bucks. That. That's less than two movie tickets, right? And they don't have to share that cut then with the theaters because they share a, a, a portion of the cut. To the theaters yeah. get mm-hmm. get a portion. I think forty percent or thirty percent, depending on Disney. How Disney negotiates those hard is probably less with Disney movies, but. Yeah. You know, there, there's a good shot that if they did that, I mean, whatever whatever platform, Amazon or whoever does that, would get a small percentage, but they might get a bigger kickback at the end of the day. So, so, that, so then the question becomes, do they average four tickets per person or three tickets per person? Because if it's three tickets per person and they're not losing the 30%, maybe it's worth putting it out at the $20, $20 price point, making essentially the same amount of money, but they know they're going to make that money. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there, that and, is a question. I mean, that's something you'd have to really analyze the business side of it. Like, how many tickets on average do they sell to a family, and what price point are they going in at? Are they going to Marcus for five dollars, or are they going in for full bore? Or, or do you do something where it's like, oh, hey, you know, you can pay what ten, fifteen bucks and rent it for a day or two, or pay the twenty five, thirty bucks and have it forever? You know, they, no, they, they want to do have even, it forever. You know, yeah, they don't. Want that. They could also do it as just a streaming pay per view. If those 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 of you who remember pay for you pay per view. Do you not watch UFC? UFC and porn. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, much. but the idea that that it is going to so it's going to be at eight at eight a.m. at nine a.m. at ten a.m. You know, they're going to be showing this film, and you can purchase your ticket to that showing. And see it, and possibly even see it with various. Oh, there you go. They fun- stream. Yeah, I, I think that's a much more likely scenario. Yeah, they you stream know. it. You, they stream it. And you buy your digital ticket to be there. You know, exactly. watch it. Yeah, but time. going to Disney Plus, that's not going to happen. Yeah. It's it's just not going to happen. Not, yeah, not for a Marvel movie, unless they decide to add a pay per view option on Disney Plus. Where you're going to start tearing your Disney Plus. That's too Disney much, Plus. especially as as overworked as the internet probably is right now. I think that would be a problem. You know what they're going to drop on Disney Plus? New Mutants. As they should have. Yeah, I mean. Well, it, I don't think it, I think it ended up on Hulu before Disney Plus. I actually, I think it's on something right now. It's not. Anything. Anything. No. Not Are no, you no, sure? No, oh, not it, New Mutants. I'm sorry. Dark Phoenix I just saw was on like. Oh, one yeah. Of them. It's, it's, it's what I'm using it for toilet paper now that we're in a toilet paper crisis. <laughs> ah, but you still bought I'm sorry, it. Sorry, Sophie Turner. Don't listen to them. I still love you. It's fine. Not my Jean Grey, but fine. I still love you. I, it's not so, it's fine. Fine. That's, that's coming from a DC apologist. You can love everybody who is. Who that. apologizes for DC? I love Are you that. talking about me? He <laughs> really hasn't listened DC to the show in a while. Yeah, Lilf is, a, Lilf is all Archie now. Yes. 
Archie. Oh, Archie speaking of Archie, and... do you know what is on CBS All Access? Yeah, Archie Mysteries. I saw your Facebook post. Archie's Weird Mysteries. This is such an awesome show. Picard, before you wander <laughs> off. Oh, no. What I'm is sorry. Archie's Weird Mysteries? You know, and Archie's look, Weird Mysteries. Yes, we're like, is it, yeah, is it, like is it a new show? This. Is it a new show or is it like no, an old show that they brought well, it's back? It's from like the 70s. No, it's not from the seventies. It's from the it's from the early two thousands. Nah, I look like the seventies to me. <laughs> no, it is not from the seventies, Lilith. Archie's weird. The Archie's was from the seventies. The only thing from the seventies is that facial. Is it live action? No, 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 no. It's it's a cartoon, but it's basically sort of a X Files riff on on the Archies and, you know, with paranormal activity going on at in the Archies. And, like, the first episode is an invasion of the body snatchers kind of thing. And they'll eventually get... I, they eventually do have werewolves and vampires, if I recall correctly. So you watched fact, this before Twilight Zone and Picard? Of course. Of course. No, I, I, actually, no, I actually did watch... He said watched he watched the first, first three episodes of Picard. It's like, well, I watched the first episode of Picard, and then I watched, you know, a couple more today. And I did watch the second episode of Twilight Zone, which was very good. Um, I really liked that one. That was the rewind one. And yeah, and then actually, I just I only watched two episodes of Archie's Weird Mysteries. I haven't been on CBS All Access. Only one season. I'm actually still working during the day when I'm when I'm at home. You know. Oh, oh well, you're not at home, right? Oh, yeah, I'm working from home. Okay, are you? Yeah. yeah. So what are you binging while you're working? I'm not binging. Anything. I'm working. I. Find that highly suspect. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because Rob's never had a full time job. Come on. I know. Oh, ouch. That's true. Hey, you bring it. You're going to get it back. Yes. Uh, the travails of the idle reach. Um... <laughs> Just so, so yeah. not the case. But uh, no, Archie's Weird Mysteries. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. There's a lot of good stuff there, you know. Uh, I saw the first couple of episodes of Bob Hart's Abishola, which I find a very funny TV show. You can fight me, nerds, on that. Um, it's like he's speaking another language. Well, I, I got CBS and got I looked deep, at stuff that. I would like cut, to see Tom, got deep cut. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. No, but that Bob Loves Abishola, that's on regular CBS. You can get that on TV. Oh, yeah, I don't even yeah, know I, what that is. Oh, it's, it's, it's a comedy wild. with uh, the the big guy. I forgot what other show he's been on. Um, oh, it's not uh, Kevin James, is it? That guy sucks. No, it's, you're just jealous not, that not, Kevin James has the life you wish. No, other, yeah. Don't be insulting Adam Sandler's newest friend. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. It's uh. Is it the rest? No, I don't. I forget what his name he's is. He's been on a lot of TV shows. It's the other so, fat yeah. guy. He's, oh, he's he's one of the other fat fat comedians, and he did have a guy from Mike and Molly. That's who it yeah. is. It's Mike. It's Mike from Mike and Molly. Okay, I saw that he was on another show. Yeah, and now he's with uh. What is it now? now is the it? actress is Nigerian, but she plays a Nigerian uh, nurse, and they sort of have a a cute relationship that sort of evolves, and it's so sort of... basically. So basically, he just has a mustache. And he's with another different woman. <laughs> yeah, pretty basically. much. Well, no, it's also, he actually has a very different job. It, there's a lot of interesting aspects of the story. I'm enjoying it. That's all I'm saying. It's a nice, it's a nice it's a, sitcom. It's, it's a sitcom Not that is a has prequel to, to the Jeffersons. They're actually the Willises that live next door. <laughs> and Lenny Kravitz is their son. Okay. Yes. Uh, also, Come on, you know that, that son, Willis, yeah. uh, her son is Lenny Kravitz, right? Yes. In I, real life. My yes. Best thing soon. We, we've actually talked about this very often. Uh, oh, you have? <laughs> yeah. <we've, laughs> it's Lenny Kravitz related. Of course we talked about it. Um, Rob, what's that red action figure behind you? Oh, I'm uh, sorry. That's my cat has on yeah. it. Uh, never mind. Uh, that's Daredevil. That's what, Daredevil. What kind of Daredevil? I didn't the know Marvel Marvel Legends Legends Marvel Marvel made Daredevil. Figures. I don't know what's that. Oh, look at that. It's oh, a Secret a Wars Daredevil. That's a, I don't think so. I think it's a Toy Biz Daredevil. <laughs> Which is it? Is it Toy, Toy Biz. Biz or Secret Wars? Oh, okay. Toy Biz. You can't get it on me. I got I got, I got in-package Secret Wars figures hanging in my hallway. Well, there Your you go. So, so oh, you have evil toys, got more toys than an adult shop. Don't test them. 
<laughs> or, anyway. or toys and video games. If you ever want, to, if you ever need to be stranded or quarantined, this is the place. There you go. Nice. Uh, if I ever hooked mine up, this would be the place. Actually, no, we're in quarantine. Stay away. I don't want it. Yeah, I don't want to go there. Yeah, anyway. you've been there. Rob and Charlie with those Corona catchers on their face. <laughs> I don't think that's actually true. That was a what old, that we grew discussion. Corona catchers. No, no, no. That that, that having a beard increases. What about a little? Mine. I cut my. It's a baby Corona catcher. <laughs> exactly. I cut mine short. No, it's yeah, but there's there's um something out there that says that facial hair can. Increase your likelihood of getting if the If it corona. catches crumbs, it probably catches corona. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, if it catches it, then it prevents There's a lot it from of things going that in. Catch crumbs. What, what about back here? <laughs> I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> but, um, anyway. But, yeah. No, I had a whole conversation with Tristan, because that's, that's why I did shave a lot of it off, because Tristan was worried about me. But he did not want me to shave off my... Because I was going to do, do the full... Uh, the full Monty? Luthor for this, yeah. The full <laughs> Luthor. The second hour but no, show. but Tristan wanted me to keep it, so I'm not doing the full Mon the full uh, Luthor yet. So, so do I need a no, bikini okay, wax Tristan. now? Is that what you're telling me? Because I can what? get Corona. I need a bikini wax because I can get Corona. I but, get it. Uh, um, Rob, come over. I, I, I can't. I can't have Corona. Hold on, let me go heat up my honey. Anyway, so. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> this is a family show. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, I, Charlie, I, I didn't say it. Your hat and put a hat on. You could be a lil. Is that a medical term? <laughs> it is. Oh yeah, we're anyway. We're, we're big on the medical terms here. Okay. So. Punk is a medical term. Is there... So, so uh, oh, he he is shield. That. <laughs> is, is, shield. is that ever coming back? What? Yeah. Isn't is there supposed to be one last season? Yeah, this summer. Yeah. This summer, okay. Well, it is a shield. So yeah. it already, so you, you know what's really well. What's really ridiculous is I haven't watched it since I saw the first couple episodes when they went into space. Mm. I just haven't had which time. time? Um, <laughs> which time? The first yeah, time. I, I, you know what? Multiple times. I yeah. The it was the second time. It was the time when they went to the future. I guess. Okay. Yeah. So that's. So that's... I haven't seen it since then. Rock and actually, speaking of, of, of what's going to influence what, I'm wondering if the last season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to have an effect on Loki. Why would that Cause be? Because well, they're, they're, yeah, they're, 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 they're rewriting the history. They keep on... They're basically... They're basically... What, what the Avengers was doing in that first... In, in the last Avengers movie, where they keep on creating all these alternate timelines. Right. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was doing that first. Right, right, right. Yeah, because, and and yeah. actually, I, I've heard. I mean, God only knows at this point, but that they were going to. We were going to get a surprise in the final season of Agents of Shield that it is another timeline, that it is tied in. It's just not tied in the way that you thought, because that's why we had Nick Fury and we had Lady Sif in that first season. Yes, so it'll be interesting to see what they do with that and where it falls in the overall timeline. And we may find out that actually the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are in the timeline where Loki runs off with the Tesseract. Oh, that'd be awesome. And it'd Which be really awesome means... if Tobey Maguire came swinging in as Spider-Man. There's lots of things they could do. Strange. And hip. given that it's going it's to going have to? this time travel... Sam Raimi's got Doctor Strange now. Oh, he does? Uh, I don't yeah. know if that's, that's confirmed. It's Hello? confirmed. It's confirmed. Me and Sam are like this. You know what, okay. Alil? There's right? one thing you can do to shut Charlie down. Mark my words. Oh! You can't say anything about that. That's your thing. No. Yeah, it's my and thing, and I'm right, what, 95% of the time? Really? I get so much right. I yeah, am so much I, more right I than I am wrong. Every possible. Every if possible. If you say thing, enough things, yeah. one oh. of them will be right. You know. But. I, I would, I would, I would go back and look at my history, and you will find out I am right so much more often than I'm wrong. Entirely possible. Yep, entirely possible. Mark my words, it is possible. Yep. I don't know why. In infinite universe with infinite uh, timelines. Yes, it is entirely possible. I don't know why they just don't release Agents of Shield already because it's already 
it's already all film. They should just well, release it fully. because Every- it may in fact have spoilers for other things. That's that's sort of where essentially this that which gets to our central question here is is this issue that we're dealing with right now with uh the delays in the release schedule is that going to cause problems for other shows that they have in the pipeline so if the end of agents of shield is going to have references and for what it's worth if it's meant to come in between winter soldier and um black widow and they're going back in time and no doubt there's going to be some agent carter crossover and maybe there's going to be a agent carter brought to the future kind of concept in this whole thing you know to the future to the past to the back to the fourth and all the different timelines that they create is that going to be an issue for stuff that they're already planning on releasing what so the- yeah mark my word you tell them luca so what that the- gets to be an issue can they can they have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. come out early if stuff they're going to release later need, needed that to come after. You know? I, I, I don't think they care about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. enough to worry about what it does. Yeah, I, um, I agree with that. Although, it it could be... I don't think it would have any effect on what they do cinematically, but it might. they might want to pump it out there because of the Disney Plus stuff. They yeah, might. And, and what I'm going to tell you is I would... I don't think... If they didn't care about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they wouldn't be renewing it. They, you know, Because they had lots of places where they could have just ended the whole thing. They right. didn't need to keep on going. They kept on going because someone at Disney really liked something about it. And I actually think Kevin Feige kind of wanted it back for himself. I think there was this thing where he... Well, he's got it, it now. Was, Exactly. Well, the, he got it now at the last season. So I get the feeling whatever is going to happen with it is going to be important. What about that okay. rumor that, that uh, we're going to see Charlie Cox in, what is it, in the new Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Yeah. Well, there's, it's not, I don't even know if it's going to be Charlie Cox. I, I, it, it's Marvel Lawyer. Oh, it see, be, I heard it was it Charlie Cox. Hulk. It could be. We don't know anything for sure. Kevin Smith, Kevin Smith yeah. not rumors. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, the, the statement is is that People at Marvel really like Charlie Cox. So, at that is what that is. I'm avoiding so. the joke a little. <laughs> Just give me credit for avoiding that joke. Is this, this is a family show, right? Yep. Yes. Her, her, no her giggling. orders, and he's like, oh, 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 oh. Yes. <laughs> Pat me on the back for not breaking my own rule. Uh, yeah. My rules. <laughs> Who's got the sound effects? <laughs> anyway. And yeah. That was Phil. Just... Andy has a soundboard. Yes, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, you, 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 you know, Rob, if you have to call attention to the joke, it's probably not that funny. Oh! <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay, You're going to so go, ah, joke. ah, Charlie That's... Cox, ah, ah, That's... they That's like Rob's Charlie entire Cox, shit. ah, ah. <laughs> you hey. get it? You he's, get it? He's master doom, not subtle doom. Okay. Yeah. Subtle <laughs> doom. Yeah. All right. Inevitable. All right. Let's bring Lilith into this. Uh, what's everyone think of what they've seen so far of the Batman? Have we we've seen, seen pictures, and we saw him fall off his bike. That was a stunt, man. We saw his muscle car. <laughs> we saw the bat coop. That was cool. Yeah, I like the bat coop. Um, I think it's going to be cool. I don't like the I don't like the gun logo. I think the gun's logo is stupid. Yeah, it is stupid. Yeah, but haven't um, they that's guns. I mean, it's metal, but is that? I mean, it. Looks... Yeah, I, I actually think that's a battering. I think it's like it's like he takes it off and it's a battering. So they're stealing like, from Spider Man Homecoming, where the where. Or they're stealing from Superman. His drone comes out. Where he or rips the... off his logo and it becomes a net. Or there's the... a big cellophane thing that that oh, yeah. oh, encapsulates oh, them. Yeah. And... Then they fall into the pit, and oh yeah. my god, Murders it's so bad. Murders. Yeah, it's so him. bad, and I, I, I really am sorry I watched it so many times. I was gonna say Scott's still watching it right now, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Director's cut, <laughs> the Donner cut. So Lilith, what do you think of the Batman? It couldn't be worse than Schumacher, so you know. <laughs> Nobody could it. Be. That is a low. No, it, that that's the bar. lowest bar that I have. And, so, and no to be fair, 
to, to be fair, Lilith, I mean, you know, before Josh Trank's Fantastic Four film came out, people said similar things about that. Wait, so, wait. you know, wait, wait, uh, there was no bar so yeah. low that Hermes Conrad did, cannot I, limbo under it. I thought we did the mind wipe on that Fantastic Four movie. That didn't happen. Well. If you if you oh, stack you will never up, forget. There are some if you stack up that, that Fantastic must, must Four against the Schumacher Batman, oh, Fantastic sure. Four at least the first half of the movie was watchable. Second half is such Gosh, garbage Trink. that it just Fantastic Four. The the first half was watchable. There is nothing watchable in the Schumacher Batman. Tyler, I would like to have a word with you. Somebody get Tyler on the phone. Yeah, I would not. Uh, I would not. I would actually say the Schumacher, and we're talking about Batman and Robin here, right? Oh, yes. Time. Yeah. But, but Batman say, Forever was Schumacher, too. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, that well, one is terrible, too. Batman Forever wasn't as bad as Fantastic Four. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, well I would again, say... I, I can deal with the top five. Batman and Robin, you could argue, but not Batman. Yeah, Batman Forever is better. I would say that I'm going to go out there. I'm going to say that there is a lovable nonsense to the Schumacher the Batmans uh, that makes it much more watchable than Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. I don't think I could watch Josh Trank's Fantastic Four again. I could easily watch Batman and Robin again. Okay. You know? If you go by no. that scale, I'm with you. You know, it's like I could watch it. It's like, you know, I could make fun of it. I could riff on it. It's It's silly. And what I'll say about Batman and Robin is it knows how ridiculous it is. So right. at least they're in on the chart. Yeah, exactly. Um, holy rusted metal, Batman. Oh, God. It's, it's, oh. it's very cognizant of what it's doing. And in that sense, I can watch those, those Schumacher Batmans and say, okay, you know, they're no Superman 3, obviously, but they're watchable. He loved <laughs> Superman 3 for some no, Superman 3 is not bad. Superman 4, the quest for hey, peace. Shut up your mouth. Get off my show. No, Superman 4 is the worst. Superman, Superman 4, as horrible as it is, is better than 3. Well, the only good, the only redeeming we thing is. We just got done talking about how bad Superman, Superman, Superman was. was so. awesome. The, the, uh, oh, flicking <laughs> Pete. Yeah, yeah flicking yeah, Pete. No, that was awesome. Makes the film. That, that and the junkyard fight are the only redeeming exactly. things in Superman 3. Uh, also, uh, the first introduction of kryptonite that makes you morally weak. I think that is immensely uh, viable. Also, the introduction of a of a villain who has money as their superpower. That is an amazing thing that they add to it. But they, they had that list amazing? Like... They really didn't do it before that. Really? I don't think. Um, it was very provocative because we were in that era of greed. Yeah. Good. I, I get where That's... Charlie's coming from. And really so yeah, voices. and and then you know Gus Gorman uh, by Richard Pryor is just amazing. Everything everything Gus Gorman does in that is just really, it's just a great use of 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 Richard Pryor as a as an actor and a character in it. So yeah, I mean there's a lot to sell for it. You know, Richard Pryor is in a different movie in that movie. <laughs> well, if Richard you Pryor's take his scenes movie. out of it, it is a completely different film. He's doing well, something. He's not even film, there, obviously. Huh? Um, he well, it wouldn't be as good of a film without him. He 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 well, brings he brings a special sauce, and that's good. Yeah, but he's yeah. crazy. It's like two movies. Well, it's not two movies. He's a part of that. Mo uh, anyway, that's okay, Rob. And it's fine. All I'm saying <laughs> is it's better than Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. Josh Trank's Fantastic Four is literally unwatchable. Yeah, the it second is half is absolutely unwatchable. Yeah. But you don't get to watch movies in, in, in half segments, you know? <laughs> I do. I fall asleep. Okay, well, then, there we go. All the time. You know, so, you, so, you know, so, so, you know Mugello is a pretty away. happy film, you know? It's okay. like, no, it's a pointed dog. It's a great film. Don't get Charlie started on Superman 3. My knockers are fully frosted. Yes, well, I do have frosted knockers. Um, you can be serious without your pants on. You can. Rob Killerly! Rob That's going to be the it's hardest fun. thing about Come this. Come on, Lilith. What am I serious? Whole, about the end of the whole lockdown situation is returning to the tyranny of pants. <sighs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I'll be honest with you. Well, you need to drop in whenever Charlie talks of Homer yelling, no more pants! 
Don't you hate pants? I mean, you could wear a moo like Homer did. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. With a cape. Just, just call Toga. Charlie Usher Toga. Yeah, I mean, I if I could get away with a business kilt, I would, but, you know. Business Mooma? No, business kilt. <laughs> You well, you, you would get away with the, the business kilt if together. you could, but there are restrictions on it now. Ever since that incident, Charlie. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. I have no idea anymore. It's it's like supposed to be. It's Rob. It's like oh, it's Southgate Media is a family friendly thing until Rob comes on, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> my butt. Maybe, maybe just because for once in my life now I'm sober on a, on a broadcast. Maybe I'm just saying, man. Maybe you guys shouldn't drink so much while you're doing these shows. They're called edibles, Charlie. <laughs> it is legal. Fair <laughs> enough. Illinois. I know. Rob, legal Rob, Rob, Rob loves edibles. He keeps talking about them. <sighs> People, I you know dried kiwi fruit and uh, kale. I suppose banana to get medicine soon. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Oh, uh, the so is there any? Are, are there any superhero TV shows coming up, or any any comic TV shows Star coming up that you guys are excited? Out May 12th, so we got what is that. Star Girl? Yeah, yeah Disney Star Girl is already out. <laughs> I I don't know what that is. There's one on D Disney Plus. Uh, Disney Plus, yeah. It's, it's, it's just, a movie. It's not superhero though. It's not superhero related. Char- at all. Charlie just thinks they're digging at DC by just naming a movie Star Girl. Because <laughs> they, they put out a, a film that that right now, if you Google Star Girl, it's gonna take you to Disney Plus. <laughs> so and everyone looking for Star Girl is gonna just nobody wants to use the DC app. It's garbage. Your your search history depict. You know, you might get that, but mine will go to DC. I'll just put you that way. Oh, you don't no, want to no, look at your search history, little hellfire. Yeah, yeah. Um, not on my main computer. My main computer is fine. You got to have a jack top. Oh. Everybody knows that, though. If it's twenty twenty. Anyway. <laughs> a what? Anyway. What's a jack top? <laughs> the Russian servers. Have I got yeah. Gooch. Out of the gooch. Oh, gosh. Okay. Anyway. What? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> There's a draw. It's typical for you, Willow. China is She Hulk? She Hulk? Isn't China dead? She did. But she, yeah, did, a movie but she, she, did, do, she did do a porn parody as She Hulk, yes. Oh, she did? <laughs> yes. And, uh. What's so the rate name? that movie for us, Charlie? Since... Oh, I've never seen the <laughs> film. Where does I've never seen the Compared to Superman 3 and Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. Well, again, it's going to be better than Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. <laughs> The cinematography in, in that. It's going to be better than Jess Trink's Fantastic Four. Um, uh, Jess Trink's Fantastic Four it was like a found fil- footage film that nobody wanted to find. The porn parody had uh, more of a plot than Fantastic Four. Yeah. Well, Are you allowed to say porn on a children's. Uh... It's not a oh, children's. It's just it a children's show. It's a PG show. Really, it's, it's we're only allowed PG-13. to not. Think like like, this is Mr. Southgate's neighborhood or something. We, we are allowed to use does to himself. himself. He, he oh, put, put guys robe. He's he gonna put his shoes on, take them off. Yeah. Yeah, invite people over. Anyway, what's a lot? What's a lot? Can't live off or shoes. I'm like the geek Hugh Hefner. Only Lil and Charlie are my bunnies. It's disgusting. <laughs> You wish I was one of your bunnies. You're one of my bunnies. You wish. Uh, you know it. Look at the rat. You can't deal with milkshake, my friend. You can't oh. deal with milkshake. Should we, should we talk about Alil's love of me? Should we make this public again? I thought it already was. It's not. It's, it's, it's known. It's fine. It it's known. known. <laughs> See, Alil? I, I don't know who's you're knowing it. Chris. Not true. Rob's anyway... Um, Thank you. Well, you can move on this conversation. So, so uh, I was going to say, is anyone is anyone else watching? I'm not okay with this, which is based on a comic book. Oh, it is. I didn't. Yes, know that. it is. And the this, previews look good. Yeah, well, this is the new show that Full Stream Ahead is reviewing. Me and Arr. Mars and uh, our me. Dad, he's learning how to drop plugs. Get on him. Yeah, well, well done, no, Charlie. but it is a delightful show. Um. Amazingly well acted and so well written. 
I mean, you know, and really approaches this idea of so, sort of takes the idea of realism in a comic book to a really interesting place and level that isn't, you know, realism in a comic book where things are just, you know, oh, crazy and people die, but more like people are kind of like just awkward and dealing with stuff in a very unique way without also being, it, it, it's delightful. I don't want to give away too much. You should definitely be watching it on Netflix. It is, it's, and what I love about it is all the episodes are only like 22 minutes long. So they're like an actual short TV show. Like they wrote it for 22 minutes and these guys are really good at that, which is really impressive. And it's only seven episodes. So it's really a perfect little binge. You so know? is it based on an indie comic? Yeah, apparently it is. Because, um, like, did you guys watch End of the Effing World? Yeah, of course. What a great show. You know, that's based on a comic, like, a, it was based on a zine. Yeah. Which is also really interesting and cool. They yeah. took some liberties, but it was still a pretty cool story the way Well, have you ever read the zine? Of course they took yeah. some liberties. That was <laughs> They had to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of it was like, disjointed and weird. full frontal but... nudity, but... You know. Well, there you go. I mean, for all these things, it is it is just the, you know, as we've said, that so much now of culture and television, the comics are sort of the minor leagues of what becomes films and television now. Right. That stuff that was done in that graphic media now is getting translated because people, first off, it's a visual storytelling to start with. So it's much easier to adapt from a, from a comic style format to a television show or a movie. And, you know, there's just so much media out there. Shirley had a story. And, what, I'm, am I not? You froze a second or two and Rob said you had a stroke. Oh, well, you guys freeze, freeze on me all the time, so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know whose fault it is. I just know that things freeze. I know that the internet is not a perfect stream. Unlike full ahead. stream ahead. <laughs> oh, another vlog. Look at him go. That's my boy. You taught me. Oh, so, you guys. The, the last two episodes, I've been like plugging the little Amazon link and telling people uh, to buy Pod Life the book. You know. Yeah. Everybody, buy three copies. By two friends, one friend. Literally, everyone buy it. Everyone, don't open it. Book. Help, help support Rob Southgate's uh, lifestyle of no pants. It'll be yes. worth more if you keep it in its Amazon box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can do so, unboxing videos. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, I, I was actually thinking about what you were saying, Charlie. Um, and I was I had a uh, a memory. Uh, back in, I want to say 89, maybe 90, uh, we did a zine. Martha and I did a zine. It was called Disgraceland. It was actually originally called the Dead Elvis Fan Club, but the uh, Elvis Presley Annual Prize has sent us a, a cease and desist letter. So uh, the men in white polyester came for us and said, no more. So we changed it to Disgraceland. So we got a table at the 20th Annual Chicago Comic Con. This is before it was Wizard World, before any of that other stuff, right? What was it? Yes, we were actually, if you looked in, man, I can't remember what the comic, there was a, like a, a newspaper for comics. Do you guys remember? I don't know what a zine is. Oh, oh um. Rob keeps uh, talking about a zine. Spiders I don't know what a zine is. Or... Ah, I hate you a little. Comic shop news. There were actually a couple 11. different newspapers for comics that I recall in the 80s. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a magazine, but it was on newsprint. It was larger. It was like the, the. Yeah. Something. I, I, but yeah, they, they did a huge full-page spread advertisement for Guests of Honor, and Martha and I were listed as Guests of Honor. We were told the three most requested interviews that year were us, Stan Lee, and Chris Claremont. <laughs> so where is the zine now, Rob? So no, wait. No, wait. It's, well, it was on my wall. Uh, but wait, that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is we got this booth in Artist Alley, and we were the sitting point there. The story was you were name dropping. Who no, no, with. no. <laughs> it was just really funny. We never, we never got to see any of them. But we were sitting in Artist Alley with these other uh, people that had zines and had you know mini comics and like guys that used to do comics in like sixties and seventies that were like you know comics with an X. Those guys, and 
the big buzz was that there were producers walking around looking for properties because at that time they weren't pulling from the comics industry. And this was when right at the dawn of that, this was the first like summer, I guess they had been at some other con in LA and bought up a couple of properties. Now they were in Chicago at the big con and they were looking for indie things, not Marvel and DC and dark horse, but indie stuff that they could pull from. I have a second part to that story. So, uh, oh, I have a third part to that story. So, you know who approached us was Barry Gordy Jr. Oh, wow. So, he had just started Motown Comics, and he brought Coolio with him to play at the Comic-Con at, like, an after party. And what's funny about that is we, what, we to promote our thing, I had a skull mask and Elvis glasses, and I put on a suit, and I just walked around the con. So, I was dead Elvis, and so many people reacted to this character when I came back, Barry Gordy Jr.'s wife came up and she was like, hey, man, that's really cool. I really like your stuff. She was looking at our, our stuff and uh, they started like saying, well, maybe we could have Dead Elvis come out when Coolio performs tonight. So I almost performed with Coolio, which would have been crazy. That would have been a fantastic voyage. But the other <laughs> story get it. Is I, I don't know if they're too white for that us. joke. <laughs> I get it. That's why I'm trying to figure out what year this is because Fantastic Voyage wasn't in 90. Okay, what year was it? I Who believe, it just off the top of my head, it was 94, 93, 94. A no, little, a little, the all-timers is set in. You see him every two seconds. Martha, what year was that? Maybe it was 91 or 92. I don't remember. Whatever the 20th anniversary oh. Comic-Con was. What? See, look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. The real brains behind this operation. What Give it up for Martha. And it Martha. might not have Why been a fantastic voyage. It might have been one of the It was Coolio. 93? All right. Oh, there's an album called Fantastic Voyage. His, his song. His big song was Fantastic Voyage. Before Gangster's Paradise was Fantastic oh, Voyage. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, I, don't, I know there was a movie where they trick down know. and go inside a guy's brain. Well, here's the other part of it. That's what I think of when I hear Fantastic Voyage. So, <laughs> Kitty Corner to us was How, a coffee table with some, here. with some improv actors that had a comic book out. And I had been an improv actor at that point. So I got talking with these guys and they were like, oh, wow, you're in Chicago doing it. We're up from Milwaukee and wow, what's it like here? And they had a comic book called Scud, the Disposable Superhero. Pretty clever book. It was really cool. What, he, what this guy would do is, is he'd get an arm shot off and he, there were vending machines that had the body parts. He'd go up and buy a new arm and put it on and that's how he did it. But that's not the important part. So we talked to these guys we get along and everything like, oh, we should do something together and blah, 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 blah. Cut to a few years ago. We're watching Community. And the name Rob Schraub comes up as director. And I'm like, wait a minute. Rob Schraub was one of those two guys. And then I remember Dan Harmon was the other guy. Oh. So you had a brush with greatness. You had a Rick and Morty and in. Damn you, it. Rob. Those two guys, yeah. But instead, why are you slumming with us, Rob? That's the I question. I made friends. What I made bad friends choices with guy, did you make in your life? This guy that, that had a zine that went nowhere, but it was so funny. Uh, and I can't remember his name, so that's a pointless story. But I didn't make friends with Dan Harmon and, and Rob Schraub. I made friends with this other guy who had a really funny comic. Mm. So. <laughs> so next time, find the people who aren't as funny. Because they're so they going to steal stuff from other people. and They were out there looking famous. for properties. They found Dan Harmon and Rob Schraub. And Martha and I were kicked to the curb. Um, oh, well. Yep. Sorry about that. But now you own your entire media empire. So there we <laughs> It all evens out. Doesn't it? What do you curb, want me to say? Me. It's like, you know, it's... What is the what what is the positive spin on this? Like, oh, you know, I almost, it's, you know, he doesn't have I to enhance the work. Yes, well, hey, that's true. the dream. So true. Is that the dream? Uh, it's your dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's your dream. Your dream is not only that you don't have to wear pants, but that I'm not wearing pants, and you have achieved that dream. Let's go back to when I, League of Geeks. They did this thing. It was called uh, what was that? stuff we love from the week or whatever and a little like got weepy he was talking about how much he loved me how hilarious i didn't even drop your name i just said because i was the only one 
at that time on my show that liked Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I said, I listen to this Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast and I enjoy them. I think that was the only thing I ever said. And Steve went, oh my God, he's talking about Rob again. What is with this and, Rob and, guy? And both Will? my co-hosts said Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. sucks and we moved on. I'm going to find that clip. You have a good time. Find that clip. People, Kevin Smith, I love Rob Southgate. I'm never going to find <laughs> that clip. That clip does not exist. Yep. Alil was sitting there with his papers out, adjusting some insurance claims and loving on me. And don't you laugh, Charlie. That's how we I, got you, too. I I was a very big fan of, uh, I don't know how. of the original Nuff Said. <laughs> I made one mistake in my life. I don't know how Charlie was a fan. Was we like, got everything wrong. Charlie said, these bozos can do it. I can do it. That is exactly Charlie's, like, it. Charlie's like, I love Rob and that guy who eats the Frosties every episode. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, if if, is, if I recall, my main thing was I was, you know, their their, their complete lack of knowledge of comic history and lore just had me oh. always running in to correct them. Oh. Oh. Like, well, no, actually, what happened was... That's 100% accurate. And, well, and then Rob was like, yeah, this guy Charlie keeps on running in. I think we're going to have him do something with us because he's just... Sorry. Sorry. And really what it was was just, you know, they're, I they were just anything, it was, so it was bad Jack about Marvel Comics that lore that. that should be in the Avengers. I think that's really <laughs> what did it. He kept saying it. I go, Jack, she's DC. And he's like, I don't care. Yes. Catwoman should be there. He's a very big fan of the... Of the, um, of the Halle Berry. Of the Halle Berry. And I would say oh, she's oh Storm. And it's like... God. He didn't care about Storm. No. It was all about Catwoman. Yeah. He well, you Batman. know. It, and I'd it's... say, did you like the movie? Because it's terrible. He was like, oh, I, there's a movie? I, like I mean, he didn't the... care. There's sound? I don't know. <laughs> he saw a poster. Well, you know, that was probably one of the best things about that film. So, <sighs> And if I remember right, Lilith brought Phil in. Because wasn't Phil like a cyber stalker of yours, Lilith? <laughs> No, 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 no. Tell your story how you want to tell it, Philip. We don't have a creepy. We don't have a creepy. Kelly up or? We don't have a creepy. We don't have a creepy. Well, you, I, I started listening to the Arrow podcast you were doing, and I, and you were on on Twitter and saying you're looking for guests to be on. So my very first one was with you, and then I think we did a second one, and then I was like, oh, this is great, and then I'll never forgive you. You pointed me at. To Zach, and I was just, you know. <laughs> I don't think she pointed you at Zach. I think I did. I think that she pointed you at me. No, she pointed me to Zach because she goes, I know yeah, someone like, looks yeah. for some for somebody for, for a co-host, and I was like, remember, oh, this will be remember, perfect. You might mellow him out. Remember, oh. remember the story? Yeah, yeah, because we were gonna do the uh we we're gonna talk about Flash, and then we had an arrow, and then like I'm the talking, Flash, to Zach, and then all of a sudden, yeah, then all of a sudden, this this Rob guy comes on, and he's like, "Oh, hey guys, why don't you do this on the show?" And I'm like, "Who the hell is this Rob guy?" <laughs> which and which then, is something you guys no, say regularly, I'm and sure. Then, and then after a couple weeks, then after a couple weeks, Rob was like, "Oh, hey, I see you like Batman. Would you like to do uh, You know, Gotham's coming out. There you go, Rob. You're, Thank you, you, Phil. Thank you. He's like, hey, yeah, it's, it's, people. <laughs> he's like, you want to do a show about Gotham?" Phil, Phil said it in his special way, and I was like, oh, please let him do this show. Yeah, but I will say this much. I loved doing the all-new Marvel Roundup with Phil. Yeah. Phil, me, and Parrish. And, su was... and Super Connectivity, which is still around. We just stopped. We just did episode 282. <laughs> did show. you? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love both of those shows. So, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was great. And Phil and I had a show together. Yeah, until we abandoned you. You were still breathing, so I assumed you were okay, Tristan. Yeah, I did abandon you. <laughs> I know I you hit your head. I can hear you saying, ow, 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 but I was you're trying. So, I'm also in the middle of the show, Tristan. Okay, there's my drop. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, me and Rob did a so uh, YouTube show. Yeah. About Marvel. I vaguely remember that. <laughs> it, was, it was actually really good. I enjoyed that show quite a bit. It's just, it was so time consuming. And at that point, I think I was still editing like 30 shows Every a week. Thing. <laughs> yeah, that was that was too much. Now I'm at <sighs> all our stuff, and he still won't call me back. Oh. oh, but you're our little Gelman. It's okay. You're our little Gelman. It's fine. Scream it! Leave <laughs> 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 my drop out of there. Can I? Can I tell you, you guys 
is about a cool comic book though? Because I know yes, nobody sure. probably read it. Well, got, okay, like, first, first one's from Archie, so you know, deal with it. Well, good. We should get. If you like Darkwing Duck and Ducktales, I think you might want to pick up Super Duck Number One. It's written by Frank Thierry and Ian Flynn, and the art is by Ryan Jampole. Unfortunate last name, great artwork. <laughs> it's Super Duck Number One. This yeah. is, and this is now. This is on the Archie imprint, but I'm assuming not in the Archie universe. That's yet to be determined. Anything can happen when it comes to the Archie universe crossovers, as we all know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> so far well, so good. What what is going on with their superhero imprint? Because there is an Archie superhero imprint that they always threaten to do something with. That uh, I actually just looking for new talent and stuff like um they're they're going through a bit of a um identity crisis at this point with how Riverdale's turned out and the actual like main Riverdale comic is actually more popular than the actual regular Archie book so they're kind of having an identity crisis and once they sort that out everything else will kind of like flow like a waterfall is what I'm assuming. Now and the shield and um. The, the shield and I think it's the fly and uh, the comet. Uh, those were Archie heroes, right? Yeah. But, yeah. But then they, they used to have those toys. Kind of the like uh, universe about them. So it's like a whole thing. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that Super Duck was cute. You guys might like it. If you like, I said, if you like Darkwing Duck, especially, this is very in the vein of that, like, Duck Tales, Darkwing Duck 90s. Kids well, kind if of they thing. ever open the comic book stores again, I'm going to look for it, Lilith. Don't forget, you can get it digitally. Yep. On comic yeah, that is true. So, you know. That's how everything it. will be pretty soon. I, I mean, honestly, the movie theater industry is definitely going to change, I feel, and the comic book industry is going to change because of this. They can't dilly-dally and not make new stuff for too long or people will forget. There's too much great TV. <laughs> just, it was, it just is, that's just the truth. Too many it good books to read, too many other things to do, you know? Actually, I think we'll, we'll see a resurgence of indie, and I think the indie stuff, once it figures out the digital thing, I think that's when comics will become relevant to a new generation. Yes. I hope Alternative Comics really figures out their digital um, I do too. schedule a little bit better too. I love Alternate Comics. I'm glad that they're mm -hmm. like one of the only ones that are still going to be printing. I don't mind waiting for it. <laughs> so, you know, you can yeah. get it on Etsy and delivered. You don't actually have to go out to your comic local comic book stores. So, just another Although thing I about encourage you to go to your comic book stores, you pull up yeah, and it'll yeah. do curbside service. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Just make sure you wipe everything <laughs> off. Well, open, yeah. <laughs> my, my guy's not. He's totally closed because he's in the mall. So, uh. you know. And I'm not driving all the way to Tampa, so. Mm -hmm. No. All right, I am done. You guys, congratulations on 150 episodes. I was talking to Martha earlier. I was like, that's 150 of Capes and Lunatics, but think of all the other shows that, that led into this. Between Arrow and uh, Flash, all the enough said stuff that is really kind of under this umbrella at this point. Uh, it's pretty incredible. We Lilith and I did a show together. We were on uh, Constantine. Yep. And even that, like, all yep. slipstreams right into this, which is really cool. So, congratulations, Definitely. guys. This is really awesome. Definitely. Congrats, guys. Thank you, guys. A little that really felt heartfelt. Congrats. These babies are a little alone. I will not abide by this. Oh. All right. Oh, all right. Thank you, guys. This is a great show, and it was a lot of fun to be on. I'll Thanks be back for, for trivia by. another night. <laughs> <laughs> trivia. I'm, I'm not messing with Charlie on trivia. That's oh, it's going to be brutal. Already, well, I was showing Phil an example, and it just happened to be a Harry Potter example. He's like, "Oh, I don't know anything Harry Potter." I'm like, "That's not the point." But now you've just added Harry Potter trivia to whatever I do. So I'm going to smoke the hell out of all y'all then. <laughs> what? I, wait, 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 wait. wait well, what? In Harry really Potter trivia? Crushed. <laughs> what? Uh oh, do we have a little bit? Do we have a little other Harry Potter nerd? Oh, I love Harry Potter. My whole family loves Harry Potter. Then how come yeah. you've never done Trivia Mayhem? You run away every time we do Trivia Mayhem. Yellow. Run away. You do. You run and then you slip outside a blue box because you fall all the time. Oh! I, I fell once. 
Like, as years. he was professing my love. I, I love, love Rob has to go, but he'll make time to make fun of a little some more. <laughs> of I'll say this. Right, I've little, never you, read a Harry Potter book. With I've trivia. never watched a Harry Potter film. I still know an uh, insane amount about Harry Potter. And I have no idea I'm why. I'm telling you that fan fiction, that meta-analysis is not going to hold up. That's all I'm going to tell you. If all you know is Harry Potter is from Tumblr, yeah, you're going to no. lose. That's not enough. <laughs> okay. We'll see. That is not <laughs> enough. We'll Maybe I'll see. do some Twilight trivia for you there, too. I'm sure Charlie oh, will watch that one. We know you love that, Rob. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. That's why he's looking forward to the Batman so much. Yeah. That's right. We're All right. I'm out. Out. Although he was Cedric Diggory first. so Yes, he was. Well done, Alil. Look at he's trying to show off. I'm not. I don't need to show off. <laughs> All right. I'm hanging up. Thank you guys so much. And congratulations. Alil, thanks for coming with me. All right, I'm leaving too. So you guys enjoy your show. Nuff Thanks. said is out. Nuff said. Terrible. The old okay. Nuff said. The old Nuff said. Okay. Now uh, those guys are gone. Uh, <laughs> I mean, do you guys I, I, have any comments or recommendations for this week? Yeah, I was going to say, do we want to talk any more? I mean, me and Charlie re- yeah. did a few on Super Connectivity. Lil, did you read Hulk? Because we were talking about Hulk. No. Uh, I'm waiting. It was good. It was good. Yeah. I'm glad it's getting to be good again because it, it, it did kind of like dip a little bit. I wasn't interested. So I'm glad this, when I finally do binge read. Yeah. It was a seven, 750 issue. Yeah, it was good. Road to Empire Wait a second. Was pretty good. Wait a second. Charlie, I know we talked about it on Super Connectivity, but Lilith, yeah. Charlie was going on about an X book uh, on Super Connectivity. It was the X Men versus Fantastic Four, wasn't it? Well, we talked no. about that. Oh, it was Hellions. Oh, congratulations on your discovery, sir. I loved Hellions. Hellions was a lot of fun. It uh and really I, I just love uh Mr. Sinister basically being, you know, I'm totally evil and you guys for some reason aren't kicking me out. And I know how stupid you guys all look for having me sit here at this table. And you guys are idiots. So I guess Mojo's going to come in next week. He's also going to join the circle. Who is? Because, you know, he's also not a mutant, but he is a villain of the X-Men. So obviously he should be on Krakoa. Um, I, I'm liking that they're addressing a lot of the issues that I had with some of the other stuff. So there's that for Hell. <laughs> I did enjoy the artwork. I'm yeah. Intrigued by the story, and I it it was comical to me. I don't know if it was supposed to be. I don't know if anybody else found it, but I found a lot of comedy in this. So yeah, I can I can absolutely see the the humor in it. Um, you know, I liked the obscurity of the characters they picked for it. You know, yes. Uh, you know, literally characters that I know from obscure eighties books and uh, the handbook to the Marvel universes, which is where I first I, I think saw we'll Wild say, Child. We'll say what, uh, five, five, Havoc are the most known, probably. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. Although, whatever's Orphan going Maker, on with... Though. Orphan Maker with Nanny, by the way. Okay. Yes. That was that was very cool. And, um, oh, that and was, again... That's what fooled Charlie. He was like, yeah, man, Nanny! <laughs> yeah. Bury in the lead, man. Always <laughs> bury in the lead. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was just a lot of fun. It, it really highlights... Like why the entire current X Men universe, X Men storyline is ridiculous, and I'm I'm there for that. You know, I'm just 100 percent there for that. Uh, so yeah, I, I loved Hellions one. I will probably pick up Hellions two, and it's got me interested in the new X Factor book. So if that uh, ever comes although out, although I do want to warn people, if you do pick it up, it is 4.99. So just be aware of that. What? I think oh, it's worth Hellions the price. Was 4.99? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even, I didn't even check. So. Oh, he didn't even notice it was. A, it must be good if Charlie Esford even noticed the price was higher. Yeah, yeah. I well, you like... know, because all this stuff had to be go, had to go through as a pickup, so you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so yeah, Empire Road to Empire was a four ninety nine book too. I could tell that some of these books were were a lot thicker than usual. So was was Road to Empire any good? Road to Empire, yeah, it was really good. It was really good. It. You know, it's kind of fun because it does, you know, it, it does tell the story of the scrolls and does give 
the scrolls view of it and it kind of does come off in that way that you know that sort of you know um noble warrior heroes line from uh captain marvel comes off where it's like oh you know the scrolls we were a pacifist empire and we 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 didn't conquer other words we we just traded with them and that was our whole thing and then the evil barbaric kree came along and killed the Cote and uh, started the war with the with the scrolls which which again you know they they're kind of depicting the kree as cavemen and then they give them just a little bit of technology and all of a sudden the Kree are, you know, on par with the scrolls to wage an intergalactic war with them, which in its own way is actually kind of impressive about the Kree. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. it's, you know, you know, it's, you know, cavemen versus spacemen and then someone drops a laser gun. Now it's a fair fight. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, you know, but I do love the, the implication that all of, all of Kree society is just based on found technology from the scrolls. Um, so again, stuff that's weird, and then you get a lot with the you know the Cree underground, you know the the Cree sleepers and the Krull sleeper scrolls sleepers and all the fighting and war that comes from that, and the quest for peace and the celestial Madonna gets called out Mantis, which is really cool, and then in the end we get the whole thing with you know with Hulkling uh, uh, uniting the Cree and the Scroll to invade Earth. Because what's worse than 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 that than humans? You know, humans are the hey. worst. That's the moral of the story. Well, you know, humans are only the worst because they always win. You know, that's the thing. It's like they hate the humans because every time they try to invade the humans, the humans kick their butts. So, you know, they have. They, and like one of my favorite ads they have in here is, uh, yeah, you know. Um, this one where it's like you know the fantastic four as you know these 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 monsters who just who invaded their world it's like no you invaded our world dude you know let's be clear who invaded who on this whole thing you know but they want to say oh we were pacifists and we were just a trading empire it's like no you were conquering people and shooting them you may not want to but you know they were a trading empire like the uh east india tea company you know what i mean (laughs) that Um, that richard seems to get on everyone's bad side well (laughs) you know you know that's that poor foreign exchange student victor von doom the kree the scrolls oh and that was like the thing that really bugged me about uh x versus four is like oh i know you lie awake at like wishing you had that sliver that's missing from you, the thing that would make you on par with Doom. It's like, no, dude, you blew up your face. Like, <laughs> there's, there's literally nothing about your life that I envy. Like, literally, there's not a thing in your life that, you know, the only thing is, like, like Rita's, like, just too cool to call Doom out for it. It's, it you know, um... Uh, um... You know, I really think if they ever do do a Doctor Doom film, they really need Curtis Armstrong to play Doctor Doom. Curtis Armstrong. Booger? Behind the mask. Yeah, he, he is really great at playing characters who are... If you ever saw Dan Versus, which is an animated show he does, he did, you, you, you will totally understand why Curtis Armstrong is the one man who could bring life to Doctor Doom. <laughs> in fact i highly recommend well, everyone go out look up dan versus it is such a perfect cartoon um starring curtis armstrong and well, guess, uh, you know, some you, other people you pull darth vader just have him do the voice <laughs> well no i mean just put him in the armor man you know isn't he like kind of short he's like as tall How tall as dr doom I, supposed again, to be short really short <laughs> yes well you know I'm how average. <laughs> Yeah, a twelve-year-old girl. Yeah, and again, you know, how tall is Tom Cruise? Is he taller than Tom Cruise? Is he taller than than uh, the guy that played Peter? It might be a tie. It might be a tie. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying he would be a perfect Doctor Doom. So that is my that is my that is my advice to anyone out there who is making a Fantastic Four film: get Curtis Armstrong for Doom. Don't go with that traditionally handsome dude thing because even the idea that doom was traditionally handsome is that just what doom tells everyone that's his propaganda yes 
You know, it's like, no, you were this little Eastern European dude who showed up, you, you, you know, who showed up at, at, at Empire State University and got kicked out because you, because you didn't follow the rules and you didn't check your math. You is, that, didn't... Is, that, is that like when your Honda gets stolen and you say, tell the police, yeah, they stole my Porsche. It's like, oh, I used to be so beautiful. And Reed's like, no, you weren't. Shut up, Richards, the curse, Richards. <laughs> exactly. It's like, and think about that. Think about Curtis Armstrong. I'm just telling you, that is who should be Doom. <laughs> oh. And he's I, actually I a like... really fantastic actor. Let me just actually preface that. We know Curtis Armstrong as a comic actor, but he actually is a really amazing actor outside of just being, you know, what he's famous for in his comedy, you know, uh, from yeah, Moonlighting great. and other, other things. As Domino's commercials, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's great. He's great in Supernatural as well. So yeah. He's a really talented character actor, and I think he would be fantastic if they could get him into the Marvel Universe. And I think, and also, I think, he's not on American Dead, my favorite thing he's ever done. Yeah. Well, we know you're always in the tank for American Dad, Lilith. It's so true. You know? Get past season eight. You can just start with season eight, just jump right in, and it is just, like, it is a pleasure. No, Charlie, make, Charlie, make him the mole man. I uh, could do the mole man. I, I I just feel that the mole man's a little one note for him. Okay. I I think that as an actor, he would be better as Doctor Doom. But sure, he could do mole man. Mole man doesn't have to be a little person. Mm-hmm. Although I don't like the idea if they make him a little person. I think that that takes away from uh, little people acting. You know, I think okay. that. You know, I'm that's a that's a real like personal thing for me. It's like, dude, if you are a, a short person and there's a role for a short person, a tall person should not be doing a short person's role. Danny DeVito, mole man. I think we've said that before. Everyone said Danny that. DeVito and Joe Pesci for everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, and again, fine actors that are known for comedies, but really, I, well, Joe Pesci. Well, actually, Joe Pesci is actually has people are very well aware of his comedy chops. He does do his his drama as well, but you know, yeah. But all of these guys, when they do drama, they're really good as well. I mean, Spider. Heck, you know, you you see Danny DeVito and throw Mama from from the train, and he is he you really see what a fantastic actor he can be in that, where he can be comedic, but he also, you know can be very much in his head as an actor, as a very professional performer. Twins. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that one's much more of a, of a straight comedy role. Yeah. And he can do that, too, you know? That's a... You know, I'd love to see Arnold Schwarzenegger do something. I'd love to see Arnold Schwarzenegger do German cinema just to find out if he, he can actually act in German. I don't think... But that's why he came here. Yeah, that may be why he does only English language films, you know? It's like, no, if I do it in German, they will know I cannot act. <laughs> this accent is the only thing pe- that people love me for. If I j- if, and this is how everyone talks in Germany, so no, I can't do that. Um, I do yes, want to shout is- out a Volt comic. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm trying to make us friends at Volt Comics, so... Um, right. But no, their books are really good, and people don't really read them, so, you know, I figure. Um, they have a book out this week called No One's Rose Number One. Um, it's by Emily Horn and Zach Thompson with the art by Alberto Jimenez Albuquerque. Um, it's kind of like this dystopian place it's like this just this little green zone in this dystopian place and it's kind of like a, a YA angsty Hunger Games kind of vibe but the artwork is so beautiful the story is very intriguing it's a cautionary tale but it still has hints of like optimism is the best way that I and it's very like it's not steampunk I, I don't know the word to use for it it's not steampunk but something along that line in the storytelling and the artwork and stuff I, I liked it I enjoyed it and I'm, I'm, ugh, it's gonna be a while for number two, but I is like, it more like a like a rebuilt punk, like you know, like when you when you have a story that takes place with old technology that's sort of it's refurbished. Like the world has ended, so it's like post post apocalyptic. So yeah, kind of like a rebuilt punk kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 sort of the the, the road warrior aesthetic. As I've always yeah, said, exactly. one thing I learned from the road warriors is those people were really good at fixing cars. 
You have to be. Well, yeah, it really, it's it's one of these things where just obviously in a post-apocalyptic world, if you can't rebuild a car, you are going to be dead. You know, you, you got to be able to repurpose old technology in that universe or, you know, which really means that it really is the best and the brightest of humanity who is surviving uh, that, you know, Lord Humongous, he's actually probably a very well versed person and very intelligent because he's building these dang cars and these amazing death traps. It's like, well, okay, obviously the human intellect is the dominant thing in the universe, so good for that. Yeah, I, I, I'm more into like sci-fi in my comics now, so like a lot of comics have lost their sci-fi edge, so I think that's really what drew me in. And it also has like this real cool like biotech in it and stuff, so yeah, it's interesting. Very cool. Oh, hey, uh, Charlie, did you read Falcon and Winter Soldier number two? No, I did not get the chance to. Zemo's back already. You know that they're like, oh, <sighs> Zemo's dead. Zemo's back already. Well, of course he is. Frank Castle didn't kill him. He just took his hand. Frank Castle, you know, he's kind of bad at his job. You know. He's bad at his job. <laughs> he's not a good killer. Well, it doesn't hurt that Zemo's going to be showing up in that Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. Team. Well, exactly. This is the thing about. Yeah, as we've always it's said, a with... doom bot. It's fine. It's fine. It's really a doom bot. We'll give Frank the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yeah. Well, and for what it's worth, yeah. But <gasps> the man can't kill the kingpin, and he's a big target. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, no fat shaming on this podcast. It's not a fat shame. It's a big. The man is very broad shouldered. That's all I'm going to say. He is a physically. He's big all over. Yes, yeah. see, he is a very <laughs> physically large target. He goes out in public. You know, you don't have to be a. You know, but he secretly knows once he does that. His mission is over. He doesn't want his mission to be over. It's his mental okay, block. He's bad at his job, though. It's like, oh, I can't actually solve the problem of organized crime. Or it's like, it, it, he's always, it's it's the Punisher. It's he, fine. He's a menace, just like Spider-Man. It's fine. <laughs> Ugh, he's worse than Spider-Man. The Punisher. No, I don't like the Punisher either. <laughs> Tristan does not like the Punisher. Tristan's like, you don't have a symbiote or anything. Tristan does not at all. Um, sure. you know. Oh, so, but I was going to say, that's the story whenever comics come back. Charlie S. Marvel, give Charlie S. her story where someone's like selling all the villains uh, LMDs or something to fake their deaths. Well, yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. You know, there, there are so many great excuses for how there was a, a whole thing recently about the abomination coming back and um, you know, uh, and you know, after he gets atomized and then he gets rebuilt. Oh, uh, this that whole Secret Wars two thing where yeah, yeah, yeah. supposedly but, he, you know, yeah, they actually explained that in She Hulk. It was a uh, he was someone from Earth A who came over. The Emil Blonsky from Earth A came to Earth B, and he got turned into the Abomination because it's a tourist thing. He got to come in. He got to be the Abomination for a few weeks, and I got recruited by Mephisto because it's it's a grand it's a grand adventure, you know. And again, it's a, it was Secret Wars. Remember Secret Wars 1? Doom was dead at that time. Well, his mind was in a different body, but remember, the Beyonder just plucked him from a, you know, a different yeah, yeah. time. Exactly. Well, exactly. You know, there's all sorts of stuff you can do with it. So, but, um, yeah, and that's, 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 that's the Beyonder for you. Oh, but but... You guys really seem to think that Doom was important. So, you know, uh -huh. figured I'd bring him into it. <laughs> well, he's going to have a toy. Yeah, I need the toy. Although I love the fact that they actually had to, that they because they couldn't do capes, they had to actually make the Doom toy into the book. <laughs> oh, the art, yeah, the all like the arm, big armor, like yeah. bulky armor without the cape, yeah, yeah. Which I do think is the whole thing is I think they really had a hard time with capes back then. Oh, which Doctor, is true. That's why Doctor Strange wasn't showing up. <laughs> exactly, final capes were were a bear, man. Oh, you know, and 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 yeah, especially Doctor Strange. He's also got the loose fitting, fitting tunic. None of that stuff is easily yep. moldable and, and reproducible. Because that's the thing is that you know you had to have characters. They could all have the same chest that you could print out and then just spray paint whatever you wanted on it. <laughs> that's why if you have any of those characters, you know, if you've played with them, all the paint comes off almost immediately. Yeah, I had those. Yes. Yes, they were very bad for that. But you didn't had... seal it with acrylic, you amateurs. 
I was six. What did I know? We uh, were playing with our toys, Lilith. Yeah. I, I was six or seven. I, don't know what, I was six or seven. I don't know what Charlie Esser's excuse was. I was playing with my toys, Phil. <laughs> I, love, I, I love Lilith. She was like three years old. She's like, oh, this will have value someday. Don't take it out of the box. Well, I mean, like, honestly, if a toy like has paint coming off of it, I'm going to patch the paint and seal it. I'm not just going to keep letting the paint come off. I've always been that way. <laughs> so I don't know. See, she's the kind of person who, if she played D&D, would paint her miniatures. Yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, so there we go. I did not know if you played D&D or not, so. It's been a while, but yeah, I do. There you go. And yeah, uh, me, I don't paint anything. (laughs) I I, I just. It's very therapeutic and relaxing, to be honest, for me. I can imagine. You know, people who like to do crafts usually enjoy them. That's why they do crafts. Well, some I people like to... do it because other, like, I know other people that paint their mini figs just so, you know, because other people paint their mini figs. They don't want to be, you know, plain or whatever. Breaking news 95% of people enjoy their hobbies. Well, yes, that's why I drink beer because I very much enjoy drinking beer. I find it very relaxing. And- I just, I just want to say that, like, this, this is like a thing in our culture now. Unfortunately, like, your hobby can just be your hobby. It doesn't have to be your side hustle. Like, I'm so yeah. sick of that menta- mentality. So sick of it. Yeah, because people are like, "Oh, why do you do it? What if you're not getting paid?" It's like maybe because I enjoy it. Yeah, because not everything should be a quest for funds, you know. Damn Which you, capitalism! Like, Damn you. Well, it's just like the whole point of acquiring funds is to do things that you enjoy. Like, what's the point of funds if it's not to do something that's not Everybody's making... a dragon now. They just hoard their money. Exactly. Very good, Tristan. What's the point of funds if it's not fun? Um... T-shirt alert! T-shirt alert! There you go. And on that note... Okay, we can paint that. Tristan, he likes to paint things. You and Tristan would get along great, Lilith. You would paint things and have fun painting and stuff talking about symbiotes Tristan <laughs> loves crafts you know my biggest thing right now is i'm trying to teach him that you have to like before you can make a costume you have to make a list of everything you need and you have to make and you have to make plans with measurements you know oh, gonna teach him to sew what well if, I- if when we get to that you know right now we're just trying to i'm just trying to get him to think about Three-dimensionally... Prep. Prep. Yes. Yeah, you know. How, yeah, exactly. Any good one... cost fair would tell you prep is the is the best thing you can do. Prep and prep some more and revise and revise. Can you exactly. get that cheaper? And we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We may have to buy plans because apparently you can buy plans for your own Stormtrooper costume on Etsy. And we of may do that the first Etsy. time. And that'll give us our incomplete list. And that's half the battle. And then we can follow that list to build our own Stormtrooper costume. Anyway. Anyway. Yes, and we can build it off of the masks you purchased, yes. I think we'll once to wrap it up. Okay, that's fine, man. Yeah, I smell food and now I'm hungry. (laughs) Yes, so (laughs) send us your thoughts on, well... The madness that is Rob Southgate. Uh, what are you binge watching? What should we be? What, what should we be binge watching so that we could talk about it so you guys would enjoy it? What are you? I say Stump Town. I vote Stump Town. Picard. Oh, I love some Stump Town. Yeah, Philip. Another on show board. based on a comic book. Oh, so I only read the novels. Ooh. Oh, what? I think there's okay. I don't know. I think it's based on a comic book. I could be wrong. Oh, but and uh, send us your thoughts on uh, the animated Superman Red Sun because next episode we're going to be talking to Jan DeMatteis, a uh, famous comic book writer who also co-wrote the uh, Superman Red Sun animated movie. Nobody tell Tyler. <laughs> uh, Did he work on the original uh, comic book for it too, or no? I don't think he was on that one, but uh, I'm going to. Well, I'm going to give that. I think he's old enough to be on that one. Who, DeMatteis? Yeah. He's been around he's been writing comics since what the eighties at least? Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh but any but yeah, I don't know if he was in the original comic, but I'm gonna give it another read because it's been a few years for me, so I can compare the two. 
You don't read it every year, Philip. Shame on you. I, I tease. I, I tease. go through my library and <laughs> plus I gotta read all this stuff for all these multiple shows now. You're a busy man, Philip. You know, like the quantum zone, Little Hellfire. What about our Quasar podcast, The Quantum Zone? Don't open the door, Little Hellfire. Anyway, yes, yeah, send your There's thoughts. Your... Quantum tentacles out there. Oh! Spot. Sprinkle some pin particles on it, Philip. Uh, <laughs> I can sprinkle some pin particles on it to make it bigger. It's got to be longer. I need a full length one. Anyway, send us your thoughts to capes and lunatics at gmail.com. Call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614 capes And remember to follow all of our social media all in one convenient place. That's Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash capes and lunatics. And remember to support the sponsors because you saw it here yourself. Rob Southgate cannot afford pants. So support. Uh, go check out Tweaked Audio, Hunt the Killer, Pod Life the Book, now in digital and paperback. And yes, use that uh, Amazon link right there in the show notes to help support well, poor, poor Rob Southgate. Because as we saw, his figures are much smaller than everyone else's. So, All right, Lilith Hellfire. If you nerds want to hang out with me during my quarantine, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire or on Instagram at Lilith Hellfire 69. I'm here for Dick. Crazy. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The man, the myth, the stash, Charlie Esser. Uh, before I say anything else, one thing I do want to say on uh, 4 versus X is uh, Von Doom saying, you know, insisting that they be called, that the powers that give people superpowers be called Von Doom particles. Oh, even yeah. though he says, yeah, there's someone else who actually discovered this first. They're called God, the God of Power versus the Von Doom particles. Again, Curtis Armstrong, your time has come. I told you, Doom was the first brand there in the Marvel Universe, man. Yes. Doom bots, even though Sentinel's not going to look like yeah. Doom bots. Anyway, if you'd like to talk to me about Doom bots and Von Doom particles and all the things that Von Doom does, write to me in that old fashioned email way there. Amaz and Paz once did at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And of course, don't forget to follow me on the Twitters as I live tweet Agents of Shield, which is coming back, they promised, at Charlie Esser, the C H A R L I E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing. Thank you, Maz. And pause. And pause. <laughs> hey, I told you, man. Tristan's our, our comedy writer, man. All He's right. man. So, yes. You survived the Master Doom experience. Go forth, peasants, and spread the word. And for another week, we have been your capes. Ampersand. Lunatics! Ching, ching. Ha, 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 ha. I heard you were What? I heard you were What? I heard you were Yeah. But everyone, watch... Everyone, go finish watching Picard. Season 1 finale was awesome. Especially that Riker part. You know what I'm talking about. Is he pantsless? That's all you, my friend. I wish. <laughs>